So we're here at the IP500 Alliance. Yes. And uh, who are you? I'm the chairman of the Alliance and the CEO. I'm uh, acting uh, as operational uh, body here in, in, in out of Berlin. Our, our headquarters is in Berlin located and uh, our OEMs, basically our members are international uh, huge organizations. So uh, what is IP500 wireless network? Uh, what's going on here? Is this for the Internet of Things? Yes, uh, we basically started about uh, seven years ago by discovering uh, that there is a missing spot that uh, f uh, we, we discovered that the top uh, uh, down uh, situation is not basically met by uh, bottom up uh, solutions. That means we have bought existing products, I don't want to call names, but uh, modules which are basically not interoperable with each other. So we basically found out that if you go top down, and, and make a product uh, from the application uh, point of view, then uh, we, we can basically meet the interoperability of this building, for instance. Interoperability of uh, wireless networks, is that it? Yes, basically uh, we are talking about wireless networks. Which uh, kind of wireless? Is it Wi-Fi? Well, you, we are it? talking about here the smoke detectors, for instance, and the most important part is this kind of detectors, smoke detectors, wearables, uh, we have basically also kind of uh, only uh, simple products which go into a door, like for instance. And you have to understand that all of them have to basically work to each other, with each other. Like a smoke detector with a mobile uh, device or with a door lock, which I don't have, but that could be also put in a door lock. So basically, the problem was in the last days or in the last years that we basically discovered that the interoperability has to be put on from top-down approach. So you have to understand the, the applications uh, from, from a building. If we may go here, you have to understand the applications from a gateway point of view, smoke detector point of view, maybe a smart grid point of view, because all the requirements are different. So we started as a top, again, top-down approach saying, what do we need? What do we actually have to meet? Instead of making a product like a, a wireless sensor and install it at the end of the day, you have discovered that this, uh, let me say, uh, uh, heating uh, system is not working with a, with a smoke detector because there are missing pieces. So uh, it says here, wireless mesh networks for security applications, but um, so is this Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, is it something else? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Wi-Fi is for high data rate, as we know, right? High data rate are basically for video, for data communications, like uh, for PCs, but smoke detectors have different requirements. There are norms, regulations uh, in, in Europe, uh, worldwide, UL is a name, uh, VDS is a name, uh, is a regulation, UN uh, regulations are very critical for, for such a uh, product. So, so wireless mesh networking, uh, mesh networking communication needs to meet all of that requirements. So we are talking about light uh, systems, we are talking about smoke detection systems, and we're talking about different kind of heating systems. And IB500 has met all of them together in a single uh, spec, and then have asked uh, suppliers like Connetics, like we, we see Connetics here, um, they actually are the supplier of our uh, module, which you see here. It's, a, it's a basically the, the module, it's IP500 module, this is the result. And that's basically a, a access point, kind of, right? It's a, a development kit, which basically makes uh, the connectivity to the individual uh, products. So the, what you have seen here is, is kind of a gateway here. We can also connect that to the GPRS uh, world. Uh, and that uh, requires, of course, connectivity from the GPRS world into the IP500, which you basically see one of the examples here. So, uh, you're talking about uh, sub gigahertz? Is that what it is? Is, that, uh, is it like the white space area or something uh, like that? No, uh, sub gigahertz is basically the 868 or 915 band. Uh, from worldwide perspective point of view, this is 720, something like that, to 980. Because different countries have different, uh, basically, uh, frequency bands. So is that uh, we, licensed or unlicensed? Uh, this is uh, unlicensed, ISM band. That this was what was the TV before? Uh, it, a part was of the, of the TV before, but we uh, we took the already existent uh, ISM bands, which is basically 868 in Europe and 915 in the US, for instance. And for instance, in Japan, it's uh, 920. So we put all of that into our specification, as we said. Uh, from the wireless point of view, we have uh, taken IPv6 uh, protocols 
uh, which basically uh, uh, gives you the ability to give every single device, Internet of Things, a address, a unique address, right? Um, we took on top of, uh, of that also protocol stacks, uh, protocols like BACnet over IP. So we put all this together and basically when you see here that in a an, in an, uh, diagram, that that's basically the full chain here. This is the OC layer and you see we go far from to the top from the physical layer over the transport layer to the uh, protocol layer, which basically is the IP500 uh, solution. And that's basically here you see th this is basically the hardware and that's basically the diagram of the entire thing. So it's the IP500alliance.org. Uh, how many people are, are using it right now? Oh, we, we have uh, the major players like Honeywell, Tyco, uh, Siemens, Bosch, uh, UTC, you name it, from the building automation. And basically, uh, what is really interesting, this hall, for instance, this is hall is our target marketplace. Uh, in the old days, or in the previous days, and even today, you can see a lot of alliance, like, like the Zipi alliance, like the Threat alliance, like Z-Wave, they are basically focused on uh, home we basically address that building here because that building has a different character. Here is, uh, we are talking about 10,000 of sensors, not only hundreds or even 10, we are talking about 10,000 of sensors. So all the major players, again, as I said, Dorma, for instance, or, or other uh, big uh, Schindler, uh, the elevator guys are members uh, of us uh, in our alliance, and they are basically uh, deploying our products into their systems. So uh, does that mean that all the all the products are using uh, this this uh, frequency and this system right now, I, or I some would, of them I are using different? I would wish that all of them will use it at once, but uh, step by step, uh, that's the uh, secret here. Uh, some of them are uh, using it today, and some of them uh, are building that in future. What we are doing now is smart cities. We are doing we are organizing smart cities and smart uh, uh, facilities. So basically, what we are doing is. Uh, we are integrating that module into the products and going into a live uh, showcase or into live projects where we demonstrate the interoperability between, for instance, a motion detector, as, as I said, the smoke detector, and for instance, a mobile detector. So all of that is happening right now, and we are deploying that into the smart city projects. So Internet of Things is a, is a crazy big uh, uh, industry, sure. and there's a lot of things are happening right now. Yes. So, is this going to be the whole world that's going to be using this? Well, uh, you know, I would say yes. <laughs> Why? Uh, because you have to start with the highest, highest performance or most critical devices. Uh, as I said, if you go for, by, with a truck from, south, uh, from North Germany to South Germany or from North Japan or England to South England, you have to be careful of the lowest bridges. So the lowest bridges in our world are the, the, uh, the security safety devices. So we understand that we and we are the only alliance supplying this, this module into such a product, right? which basically gives you the chance to interoperate with other uh, solutions. That means security, phys physical security, is the top, 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 top uh, issue and uh, topic in, in this uh, IoT. And believe it or not, if you look around, there is none other alliance which supplies a product, again, a module, which can de be deployed and de uh, uh, built into a smoke detector and likewise in a door, for instance. Is the Thread Alliance incompatible with what you're doing? Is it a different thing or is it could be the same? The Thread Alliance is basically, first of all, uh, focused on home. It's 2.4 gigahertz. 2.4 gigahertz are not, is not going to work in this hall. Again, I'm, I'm uh, uh, putting home in one yeah. basket and commercial building in another. But what we, uh, what we can do with sub-gigahertz applications and sub-gigahertz communication, we basically can go from a, a commercial building into a home. So in, with Fred Alliance, we, have, they are, we are using the same mechanism, by the way, 6 low pan in the, uh, 6 low pan, in is, six low yeah. pan is, is also mashing, asynchronous mashing. Um, we, we, we do share, of course, some of the, uh, some of the application uh, which we see here, and we do share uh, some of the IEEE. However, they are using, as I said, 2.4 and we are sub gigahertz. And we have the dual band. This is basically the, the newest product which we released by Kinetics again. Uh, these are our suppliers. This is the world first dual band for security application in the IoT uh, world. So basically, that's, that's the product you see here, which basically addresses both, both bands. Does it use an ARM processor? 
How does it work? Uh, well, ARM processors are almost are everywhere. When you when you see in a microcontroller, we do use microcontrollers, and yes, we can use and we do use ARM processors. All right. And so people to use this, they ha they have to buy the hardware. They have to just join the alliance. Well, how does it work? Is there yep. a price, or how does it work? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Uh, well, we we kind of also protect our business model to make the uh, interoperability work. Uh, how you do this is you create an alliance. You you join as a member as a, uh, as a member. You pay eight thousand uh, euros per year. By the way, that's just a fee that feeds our uh, alliance. By the way, it's basically uh, the the money to operate the alliance, and then you are able to access all the documents, uh, all the uh, hardware, and work with our suppliers on building your products. And you can you can also use any other supplier. You can use any hardware maker, or how does it work? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, we choose. We have. Let me start with that. We have chosen uh, basically uh, Kinetics, uh, Atmel, for instance. We have chosen IB, uh, um, uh, EBV, uh, TÜV Rheinland uh, as a supplier, as a provider of services and uh, of products. And uh, in about but one or two years from now, we're going to open that to other. Uh, partners uh, because we again our most precious uh, core issue is interoperability and you secure that interoperability by making that alliance work in a in a fashion that you have your partners set you have your specifications set and then you go to with the first products into the market and expand that into other applications so security is that a lot of encryption and provisioning or how do you how does, how, what's the what's the trick for making sure the building does, isn't taken over by a Somebody else. Yeah, that's basically uh, what you said. It's a, it's a, a three-layer security application or uh, issue. When you go here, we have security in the hardware, right? In the physical layer, by mechanism we built in. We have security uh, by ISA 120. Uh, 120, and we have security also at the application layer we have built in uh, because we are using uh, several protocol stacks uh, which are making uh, security work. So basically you have security at all three layers in our application. So is it 100% secure or people well, can still hack it? Well, you have never 100% secure because it's a matter of time, as we all know. Everybody can uh, uh, we, we hack, can use all devices. hack all devices. But then you update them uh, remotely? Yeah, well, yes. Uh, again, we have different mechanisms. If you if you want to break into an, an house, you need time also, right? So I think our system, and I believe, and I, I, we have tested that, is pretty much secure that you cannot actually really break into this kind of network within a certain time. All right.